new to Curiosity Stream. There's no better feeling than have them hand you a check for two hundred fifty thousand dollars and thank you for ripping them off. Why do they do it? And how can you avoid their scams? Go inside the mind of a con artist. And the Ark of the Covenant was it truly a divine power? And why did it kill some who touched it? Unravel the truth behind this biblical mystery on Ark of the Covenant revealed. It's all on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are twenty dollars, just a dollar sixty-seven a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. It's Nick Costos and Ken Barkley on You Better You Bet from BetQL. Oh, please bring it up, Jake. For us to start giving some bets out for sure i think i'm more excited about the same game parlays than the, the bets for the games yeah i mean that's i think that's the point right that's kind of like it's kind of why they're peddled so much because they're they're pretty awesome they're really fun well and for they're these games too it's like yeah the, the side in the total is probably pretty good in these games so let's figure out a way to create like a really really fun lottery ticket that i was like two of mine last week were really close three actually were really close my rams one was really close just cup didn't go over his number my Raiders Bengals one was really Imagine close. Imagine losing on that. Like, that's where you lose, too, is on Cup. Raiders Bengals was really close. I had every leg except for sacks. I was a little short on the total sacks in the game, um, but I had the other, all the other legs in that. And then, uh, actually, it was probably just those two. My Steelers won. I was like, it was alive, like, like going into the second alive. half, I think, right? Yeah, but it, it was alive at halftime. But like, the other two were alive, like, late. Like, they actually they checked off a bunch of the boxes. Oh man, when that when TJ Watt scored that touchdown, I was like, "Could this?" <laughs> it was this, incredible. I just, just the amount of people that immediately were like, "Nick, it's alive!" <laughs> it's alive. I was like, "It's like, yeah, guys, I I know, I got it." We're all. I watching. love that, and I'm I and look, I appreciate that from people tweeting like, "Hey, like Julio needs four yards to go over." Like, yes, 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 I, yes, I, he I'm does. Aware. Yes, mm, I, yes. I, I have I have also bet this. Yes, I, have, I, I also have this NFL football game on. I <laughs> yes, also I have, I have all the stuff that we talk about. We we bet. Yes. So like we we are yeah. aware of all of it. All right. College hoops. Uh, I would get it if you were like, hey, like Furman second half needs to go over. Oh, the that I'm okay. Not I got I got twenty other things going on. Yeah, maybe not super locked into that game. Probably know what the score is, but like like Chiefs Bills where it's like hey Diggs needs 8 more yards like yes he does <laughs> he does he does need 8 more yards like I got Chris, Christian Kirk needs do you think Kirk's going to get one more no no I don't think so no. also like and the poor people that were sweating the like the field goal prop we didn't even talk no, about that oh cuz I was off on Tuesday yeah landed 3 the Rams could have kicked at the end people are tweeting yep. me like it's got a shot i feel like saying like no it doesn't unfortunately cuz we just you've seen yeah, the movie before sucked. Yeah, it ends terribly. Okay. Yeah. It ends poorly. Yeah, B- bad. Um, what music do we want to play? Oh yeah, we started <laughs> this. Lur- that exact question launched the fifteen-minute conversation of the last segment. By the way, I didn't mention. By the way, there's a guy named Joe that goes to Rosary. I talked about this oh. with Moose, who's a Yo, Joe who wears g- great guy. I don't know him. I shouldn't say that, but he, I mean, goes to rosary every single week, offers Seems prayers nice. for like a multitude of, protect- yeah. how could you, this was my thing. Like, how could you be a bad person and do this? Right. I guess you could be. Sure. Um, he wears an old school giants jacket. Like that has to like be blue. like, and I say this, I say this like affectionately, like, I think it's cool. It's probably like 20 years old. Like it's a weather right. jacket, but it's cool. And a Packers hat. This guy loves sports and he is dying to talk sports with me. I walk in. What'd you think of the cowgirls with the quarterback draw on Sunday? And I'm just like, oh God. Here's walked my into offering. A, walked to into not a talk sports Staten when Island I was not on the air. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Call them the cowgirls and then reference the quarterback draw. Yes. It's like, I'm done. Who would you rather have? Ja or Giannis? <laughs> like, wait, how did you even get, did you hear that topic? How did you even get Neither. that? I'd rather, I'd rather have Jesus. Can we pray, please? <laughs> right. Yeah, so for, I'd rather have Mary. Pray. Right. That's all right. That's uh, okay. So what do we no, but seriously, like what music do we want to play? Uh 
Can we just play recommends? Is that okay? Yeah, go ahead, Jake. Lay, lay down that, please, that YBYB recommends. All right, we begin our NFL sojourn in the place where all good things begin. Nashville, where the Tennessee Titans, three and a half point favorites over the Cincinnati Bengals. The total in this game is 47 and a half. So it's gone up a half point from what it was a little earlier. So 47 and a half. Titans, three and a half, minus 110. Either way, uh, Titans, minus 180 on the money line. The Bengals at plus 158. You're broad. I like that we've got all this information here, Scott. This is good. Uh, 4.30 p.m. kickoff. Weather, 36 and clear. It'll be Ian Eagle and Trent Green on the uh, on the call. Charles Davis and COVID protocol, so Trent Green subs in. Evan Washburn and his immaculate hair, which got like a ton of burn on the broadcast last yeah. week um, on the CBS broadcast. Cleet Flakeman, that idiot, will be the referee for this game, so expect some be great. chicanery for sure. Awesome. Got to go from uh, Boger to you, Blakeman. Yeah. Do you know, by the way, who the referee is for the uh, for the Bucks Rams game? Have you seen this yet? Well, I see it now on my screen. But why don't you en- enlighten our listeners? Yeah, Sean, the, the demon spawn of Ed, Sean Hockley. Actually, that's probably why you should bet the box. Because it's Hockley calling like Brady getting tapped on the hip as like a 15 year Roughing the passer. Something. Yes, yeah. you get, yes. Like Aaron yeah. Donald gets sent to, ejected and sent to Guantanamo Bay for touching. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, you're in Florida. It's a quick plane flight. That's what, that's All right. A- so yeah, it's more on Cleet Blakeman as the referee in this game. So expect some kind of BS nonsense. Um, all right, so let's do side in total first, then we can get to some props of this. You know what? I'm not going to give out props today. Um, we'll give out props on Saturday and Sunday, but you'll be able to tell based on the same game parlay what I'm leaning towards. Yep. And side in total, please, Titans and Bengals. Yeah, some of this will be, I think it's valuable because it's Friday to rehash some of the conversation we had on Monday. Like, how do we get to this number? What, Like, what's going on here? Because I think a lot of people probably come in now um, for the weekend. You and I were both off on Tuesday and Wednesday, so we haven't had a ton of conversation about these games. Um, I think this number of three and a half makes a ton of sense. This is a very fascinating handicap because if the game were to take place in the regular season with Derrick Henry out of the lineup. So let's say this game took place like week 14, something like that. Um, I would have this game either like pick Titans minus one, something like that would make a lot of sense. I have Titans. I have was one of the worst rated teams in the entire postseason uh, ahead of only the Raiders and the Steelers. I think of teams that made the playoffs, but there's a lot happening here. Just like in green Bay, San Francisco, there's a lot happening here. Um, two things that are magnified in this situation, three, actually. Uh, One, the Titans are at home in a playoff game. That's going to be more valuable than a regular season game. Uh, Two, Derrick Henry is back. Three, and normally that wouldn't matter, but for an impact player like Derrick Henry, any other running back, I don't care. In this game, it's absolutely having an impact on what the point spread is. Three uh, is uh, the fact that the Titans had a week off, and that is going to be heavily built into whatever the number is to look at Packers, San Francisco, the same thing's happening. So that's how we get to more than a field goal open two and a half went through three out the other side. Totally agree with it. Uh, I have some Titans two and a half. Nick has some Titans two and a half. We talked about this last Saturday on the show that if it opened there, it was crazy and it needed to be at least three in the game. That's kind of our thought process leading up to this moment. So we're both holding a ticket that doesn't exist anymore. If you're here right now, you're like, thanks a lot, loser. Please tell me what to bet on right now. Um, I think this market's really good. If you wanted to bet it, the way that I would attack it is I actually I've seen some minus 170s and minus 180s in the money line market. I think Bet Rivers is minus 189 right now because I see it on my screen. Uh, I think the Titans are a little more likely to win the game than that, even though the number is now like long since gone through three. I think this game is going to land three a little bit more often. The Titans this season have been a team that's they played very well as an underdog in a bunch of situations. They played some close games. Not exactly a team with an elite offense that's been able to like build and maintain a large lead in a game. So I do think this game lands three maybe a little bit more often than some of the like. Bills Chiefs, for example, I think lands three a little bit less. Even Bucks Rams, because of the offense is involved, even if we think that game's going to go under, probably lands three a little bit less. So um, Titans money line, I think is probably worth something still uh, in this game. But now that we're on this side of three, uh, I think that's correct. And that's kind of the funny thing is people looking at this may not interpret it this way. Uh, this says on a neutral field, Cincinnati's better. Just so everybody knows. That's what this says. Because when we do Packers, San Francisco, the exact same dynamics are in play. That number's five and a half. So it, tells, it just tells you like on in this game, Home field, week off, Henry back. Like Cincinnati better rated on neutral. Like that's how you get to three and a half in the game. It's pretty crazy. So that's actually kind of what's intimated by this number, uh, which is pretty wild. So Titans money line probably for a little bit for me in this game, uh, but that's that's about it. Yeah, I mean, look, I've Titans two and a half. Ken just referenced it there. Um, 
I think if I had to bet the game, I would lay it with Tennessee. If I had to bet it, which I don't because I already did and I have a better number, um, I would bet the over if I had to. I haven't. I don't know if I'm going to, Ken. I might just sit with my Tennessee bet and like the props in the same yeah. game more like. That's fine. Absolutely. I think so, injuries this week. Is there anything worth noting? To, I know you're you're usually this is usually part of your comment, but it seems like like business as usual. The Bengals are going to get Hendrickson, but neither defensive tackle, right? Yeah, Ogan Joby out for the season. Daniel's not going to play. Um, Ogan Joby is the is the bigger loss here, which helps right. the over. Like I actually think. Well, the Chiefs Bills game doesn't really have anything. Clyde Edwards Hilaire is playing in the game, which is like whatever. He misses the game, it doesn't even matter. Um, Packers, Niners, and Bucks, Rams both have injury stuff that like really I think factors into the handicaps. I would not say that this is the case here sure. in this particular game. Um, so if I had to bet it right now, if you don't have a position, I agree with Ken. I think the Titans are gonna win. Um, I would bet Tennessee three and a half before I took Cincy plus three and a half. So like when I said um earlier in the week I was considering middling this, I am not gonna do that. I've thought more about it. I'm going to stick with my bet on Tennessee. I would take the over if I had to do something with the total, but I have not bet it yet. If I do take it, I'll talk about it tomorrow morning on the show, 8 (laughs) a.m. Yeah. One other thing here. I know it's it's absolutely brutal. Uh, 8 to 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow morning. Can't wait. Can't wait to bring you that show. (laughs) One other thing that's just worth considering, uh, because you and I did a ton of radio. I was, the question that I was asked related to this game and almost every hit that I did was basically like the person asking was like, well, Joe Burrow is like way better than Ryan Tannehill. So like, I want to take the Bengals. Like he's the better quarterback in the game. Like, doesn't that make them alluring? And I go like, well, yeah, like you could easily make an argument. He's more talented than Ryan Tannehill, but like, that's not really the discussion that we're having. The two, the two counters to that. Uh, Cause I'm guessing a lot of people listening either feel that way or have, have, have probably have friends who at least said that to them at some point. Two things are like, Titans are on offense. The Bengals are on defense. The ball is snapped. What happens? And it's like, what that alludes to is just like the Titans may end up with a significant advantage at the line of scrimmage, running the ball straight ahead in this game. And uh, the Raiders were able to run the ball against the tight. Now they didn't, they didn't get to do it because they were losing almost the entire time. And because they, they were did... dumb also. Yes. They're morons. And they, and they were down. Six and a half, the they averaged yeah. six and a half yards per carry. And they barely ran the ball in the game because they're right. dumb. They, they could have had a tremendous amount of success running the ball in certain game scripts and with certain decisions being made. And now the Titans are showing up with this advantage with the Bengals even more beat up and with Henry returning. So like monster advantage for the Titans in the game, possibly in that situation that has nothing to do with Joe Burrow. It's also worth noting just really thinking about what we saw from Raiders and Bengals last week. A lot of people spent a lot of time talking about the other five games, basically, and not a lot about Raiders Bengals other than the officiating. But what the sort of officiating ended up masking was the fact that on a yards per play basis, the Raiders, uh, the Raiders outgained the Bengals yards per play in that game last week in a home game for Cincinnati, the Raiders who were in a miserable situational spot outgained the Bengals on a yards per play basis. And they went one for five in the red zone. And they had a ton of boneheaded mistakes and penalties, which resulted in them losing the game so like yeah cool it's joe cool it's like this amazing quarterback on a team that probably gets dump trucked by almost every good team in the league if they play that performance that they had last week and now they're showing up to a team with a week off that's historically awesome in that situation during the regular season i just think this sets up as like like titans win but i have no idea the margin i think it's more likely than everybody else does or that the market does i think do you want to give a start at least start your same game parlay sure um so i think the my same game parlay is basically about like, I mean, it's just like how I see the game playing out. It doesn't really have a fancy title, but I think the Titans are going to win. So uh, Titans money line, Tennessee first to 10, get out to like a lead in the game and them getting out to a lead creates a bunch of statistical probabilities for how the game is going to play out. Uh, them getting a lead, possibly like a multi-possession lead, Joe Mixon under in rushing yards, 64 and a half four plus total combined sacks between the teams burrow having to throw a ton being behind in the game 25 plus burrow completions being down almost the entire time and jamar chase over his number 84 and a half yards so basically titans get up in the game early chase number that and burrow now? wow i took a i took a, i think i took an alt i think is what ended up happening okay i think i, think I took a one alt up i think is what i did but I, i'd have to go back and check um so all those things in combination basically tennessee to win get up early mix and under burrow completions over uh four plus total combined sacks chase over um i think it was uh i have it as 10 to 1 but i i did one with tennessee money line and without i think this is like 15 to 1 with tennessee money line and it's something like that all right mine is called i know i don't watch anime but i'm aware of like a very popular anime because i see people tweeting about it attack on titan this will this is attack by titans oh so it's like titan isn't titan ae isn't that wasn't that a movie at some point i don't know 
Was Jamie Foxx in it? Probably. <laughs> and George Clooney? I think it was, think it was Ice Cube. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, here's my same game parlay. I also have Titans money line. I have an alt over 46 and a half. I just brought it down a little bit. Over 46 and a half. Again, Titans money line. Julio Jones. And I, I gave this out, I think with you, Ken, on, well, you didn't yep. do Wednesday. But I gave it out well, with we, Moose you on You talked Wednesday about it yesterday, yesterday as well. You talked about it yesterday as well. Yeah. So I, I talked about it with Moose on Wednesday. Julio Jones. I, I, I have a bet on him at 38 and a half. The number is now 46 and a half. I still like the over. Julio over 46 and a half. Titans money line over in the game. Ryan Tannehill over 237 and a half passing yards. I feel like everyone's going to be keyed on on Derrick Henry. And uh, I think Tannehill's going to beat him up down the field in the play action game. Bengals terrible at uh, play action defense against the play action passing game. Tannehill, one of the best in the league at it. And you got a running back and two great receivers to make it happen. And how about this? Picture in your mind's eye. First and goal at the two for the Titans. Everyone in the whole world watching Derrick Henry including the Bengals, the play call, naked boot, scooting into the end zone, Ryan Tannehill, Tannehill, anytime touchdown. All of these bets combined to give you 22 to one on the Bengals Titans same game parlay coming up next bets for the Packers and Niners, including yeah, same game parlays new to curiosity stream. Could a piece of Jesus's cross have survived for 2000 years? Biblical relic or medieval forgery? A new investigation puts this potential holy fragment to the test on quest for the true cross. And Python, Viper, Cobra. Asia has no shortage of snakes, but which one takes the crown for most lethal? Careful where you step. It's Asia's deadliest snakes. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. Look, no one's perfect. Even the best baseball players strike out with the bases loaded. So if you feel like you come up short in the bedroom sometimes, it's perfectly okay. With Roman, you can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for ED, all from the comfort of your home. A U.S. licensed healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan. Getting started is simple. Schedule an online visit at GetRoman.com slash BetQL now to get $15 off your first month. That's GetRoman.com slash BetQL. It's Nick Costos and Ken Barkley on You Better You Bet from BetQL. All right, let's get back to the bets here. Jake, you can fade up the YBYB recommends and let us continue our sojourn through the divisional rounds of the NFL postseason on the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field, Ken, where we have the Green Bay Packers sitting as five and a half point favorites against the San Francisco 49ers. Total in this game is 47. This will be uh, on Fox, the broadcast team, Buck and Aikman with Aaron Andrews and Tom Rinaldi. Ronald Torbert is your referee. I don't really know who that is, so he's probably good. I don't know anything about him so that's good uh 10 right. degrees will be the temperature um probably a little colder with the wind chill so nick bosa cleared bosa is going to play in this game for san francisco garoppolo is going to start fred water is going to play elijah mitchell is going to play bakhtiari questionable for the packers marquez valdez scantling is doubtful for green bay jair alexander also expected to play back in the lineup for the green bay packers what do you got here side in total if anything packers and the niners Sure. So to sort of start by rewinding to the start of the week and uh, and how the market kind of comes up with this number, just for people who are curious, when we did Titans Bengals in the last segment, the start of that was uh, that the implication was actually that the Bengals were better on a neutral, but there were so many situational advantages for the Titans. That's how you got to three and a half in this game. Uh, I actually think in in this game specifically, where you have some of those same advantages, what this implies is that these are actually two pretty evenly rated teams on a neutral field. So you have two pretty evenly rated teams. Packers may be rated a little bit better. Uh, you have the Packers uh, playing at home in a playoff game where they generally have a place where they generally have a very strong home field advantage. That gives you a really significant edge uh, toward the Packers. And then you also have them with a week off. Those two things in combination could actually take you from like just this is my opinion i think that gets you from like under three to five and a half i actually think that's what those two things get you packers playing at home and uh and having a week off that's how strong those two things are from a win probability standpoint so what the start of that sentence or the start of that explanation was that i think these are actually two pretty evenly rated teams i think all four teams remaining in the nfc and you and i did the sim yesterday i think they're all rated like very very similarly in my numbers at least i have them rated all very similarly um so i'm i'm just a tiny bit interested in san francisco now my uh, statement at the start of the week was 
if I knew Bosa was playing and there were not other significant injuries and Garoppolo was going to start and seem healthy and it was six, I would absolutely bet the Niners. Now, as we started finding out that those things were all true, the sixes all went away. That happened yesterday. But if they come back or there's a rogue six, then there's like one on the board right now, basically a six minus 110. That would be a bet for me on San Francisco. So we're much closer to a buy point for me on San Francisco than we are for anything involving me playing the Packers in the game. I guess it's the right way to look at it. So that's just my opinion on it is like, if I see a six, I'll bet it. If I don't, I kind of like the Niners, but I would much rather have six. Do you have, um, I know you're not going to bet the total, but you have a thought on it for people that are interested in betting it. The thing that makes it really tough to bet side and total in this game is just like the health of Garoppolo, right? Like if he plays that first series and you're like, oh my God, this looks terrible, then that's the end. Like it's the end of the total. <laughs> I mean, unless the, unless the Packers really want to put a huge number up, then that's the end of it. Uh, and then obviously... Like he could look great and the game could go over the number. So it makes it a little tricky. If I had, if I had to bet it, like the average outcome in this game is probably Garoppolo's less than hundred percent. Valdez scaling injury hurts a little bit for the Packers and like, so lean under probably at the number, but I honestly think the number is pretty good. Um, my analysis of the game is exactly the same as Ken's. We talked about this on Monday. I touched on it yep. on Wednesday with Moose. Um, I bet 49ers plus six yesterday. And like, to be fair, like I, I'm going to, I think I'm going to end up with a good number here, but like my bet like, in addition to making the bet on the game, my bet was that Nick Bosa was going to be cleared. So, like, I was willing to take that risk after, like, you know, reading the tea leaves, talking to some people in the league that Bosa was going to end up playing in the game. So I And that Garoppolo was going to be okay, bet. too, which is important. Well, Garoppolo yeah. had the full practice on Wednesdays, which made me feel yep. a little bit better at that at that point when I made the bet. So, like, that that was really, like, the bet kind of hinged on, like, is Bosa going to play? Like, and I think that's, a, like, he's a very impactful player, like, especially in this particular game, especially if Bakhtiari can't go. So, Niners plus six for me. Um, I, otherwise, I agree with Ken. Like, I guess the last question to ask before we get to the same game parlay. Let's say Bakhtiari is ruled out. MVS ruled out. We know all these guys for the Niners are in. How far does it potentially drop? Like, I'm guessing that the Niners would draw interest if Bakhtiari doesn't play. Like, what do you, what do you think the bottom is here? Like, five, four and a half? To, is, would there ever be a four? Like, does that ever happen? Like, where do you see the number going? Uh probably not much lower than it is right now. I think it just prevents it from getting back to six, probably. It would have and happened people... already, probably, right? Do you agree with that? Yeah, because, like, what... Like, is it really that new, anything that's going to happen from this point forward? You know what I mean? Like, we already... Like, an NFL injury uh, line movement during the week, you basically tend to, like, buy the rumor. So, like, if it seems like a guy's not going to play, that's when the number moves. It's, like, not really when he's ruled out, unless it is, like, a monumental franchise quarterback. Then it'll move a lot on the rumor, and then even more on game day, because everyone, all the, even all the casual people will show up and bet the same side, and everybody will bet the same side in the game. But with, like, non-quarterback injuries, it seems like people buy the rumor and then it just stays there basically so like the the move has already kind of happened a little bit six to five and a half and and just or not not even continuing to climb basically would almost be um the resistance so like for people who don't know five basically like never lands in the nfl it's one of the least important numbers to try to get so if this went five and a half to four and a half it's possible you'll even see people like oh my god like it went from five and a half to that's like well to be nothing. to be fair to be like fair nothing. and i just i remember this because i was in chicago the packers played the seahawks on divisional weekend a couple years sure ago did. the spread was four and a half i bet seattle the packers won by five and i was really upset right. <laughs> isn't it amazing how you always remember the one that lands on the numbers and always yeah, amazing how that happens right indeed. Uh, so yeah so at five a pretty irrelevant number if it went five and a half to four and a half would i be shocked no if it stayed the same would i be shocked N not at all i think we're in the the right neighborhood if it got back to six like does, I don't think Bakhtiari has to play for it to go to six necessarily, but like it is this juice is the range. or six. Like it's yeah, not. I would is, say it's not quite five points and five, but I mean it's it's minus one twelve right now for the Packers at Bed Rivers. This is the range that we're talking about where I think we're going to have to make decisions. So for me, it's like four and a half, five, five and a half. Not interested. Six Niners four Packers, but you're never going to get. I mean, I would be, that's a number I would be shocked if we saw four minus 110 for Green Bay in a divisional game at home with a week off. I'd be very surprised if we saw that number. So it's really just, do you get the six with the Niners? Otherwise, like figure out another way to play the game. If you love Green Bay, take their money line, put it with Tennessee. If you love the Niners, like figure out ways to, to play them, you know, can play them derivatives first half even. Like I think it's three and a half in this game probably. So there's a bunch of options that you have, but again, we're talking about a market that I think is pretty good. You better, you bet back QL Network, Nick Costos, Ken Barkley, Phenomenal Football Friday, all our picks for Divisional Weekend in the NFL. Ken, please, sir, your same game parlay for the Packers and the Niners. I did a fun one. I don't know if this is the outcome that I expect. Uh, this one's called Niners Shock the World. That's the name of this parlay. So, um, San Francisco Moneyline, 
So if the Niners win this game, what's probably true if they win the game, uh, if they win the game, I think they probably have to get off to a pretty good start. Now it's worth noting in the Sunday night meeting between the teams, I believe they got down 17, nothing and, and came back in the game, if I remember correctly, but playoff game on the road with Garoppolo, like probably have to get off to a pretty good start in this game, use their running game to get off to a good start. So it's Niners money line, Niners first to 10. Garoppolo over pass yards. I think I went one alt uh, down, so paid a little more for over 224 and a half. But he has to be, if they're going to win the game outright, he has to be competent in the game, like perform pretty well. Uh, Debo, 50 plus rush yards. Uh, I think he had, what, 10 for 81 last week, basically. I think, obviously, any uh limitations restrictions on how much they use them in the game are completely off for a game like this josh allen for the bills same thing just like this is the reason why you you do this is this is the reason why you have this weapon to use them in this spot so debo 50 plus rushing yards and then if the niners are winning the entire game and like that's their path to victory is like being in the game then aj dylan the clock eater for the packers if they had a lead maybe be a little more limited as a result dylan under 44 and a half rush yards so niners get out basically niners get out to a lead the guys who always play well for them play well when they win and that results in the packers not using one of their skill position players as much because they're they're trailing in the game so niners money line niners first to 10 garoppolo over 224 and a half debo 50 plus rush yards dylan under 44 and a half rush yards uh, that pays 22 to one that same game. Love it. Love it. Niners shock the world. My, uh, my same game parlay is called Jimmy's cold. So <laughs> I love this. That's why I really like. So this first one. I have, I have an alt spread of Niners plus seven and a half. Okay. Is that because he's one... cold or why is it? Why are we alting that? Cause he's really cold. Cause I, cause I think the Niners are going to keep it within a touchdown. Okay. There you go. Uh, cause it's cold. And I, yeah. and I have, and I have a Packers prop also which has nothing okay. to do with Jimmy Garoppolo being called. Um, if Marquez Valdez-Scantling does not play in the game and he is doubtful, Alan Lazard's receiving yards prop to me looks way too low at 38 and a half. Like, Devontae's going to eat. Devontae always eats. But that that yardage has got to go somewhere. And I get it. Evan Silva was on earlier talking about how, like, Lazard's a lot slower. I understand. 38 and a half to me feels way too low if MVS does not play in the game. So Lazard over 38 and a half receiving yards. So here's where we get to the uh, Jimmy's cold portion of the festivities. So not only is Jimmy hurt, not only is Jimmy going to be cold, but the Packers pass rush is basically operating at full strength here. It's a Darius Smith being activated. So I feel like even more so than usual, because the Niners are not the type of offense where Jimmy drops back, sits in the pocket for like three seconds, waits for guys to be way down the field and chucks it down the field. This is a Jimmy gets the snap, throws it eight yards to Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, or George Kittle, and counts on one of these guys to run after the catch. Like, that's what this offense is. And that's fine. That's the Shanahan offense. All good. So, in that vein, my guess is that with the Packers pass rush being at full strength here, we've seen this over the course of the last month, and I actually cost me money last week because I took the George Kittle receiving yards over, and for the fourth consecutive game, Kittle did basically nothing in the passing game. Now, Kittle, in addition to being maybe the best receiving tight end in the league, with apologies to Travis Kelsey, is the best bl- blocking tight end in the league. I think he's the best, the most overall complete tight end in the league. So I think we're going to see Kittle blocking more than normal in this game. So I'm going to stay away from Kittle. So if Jimmy's going to drop back to pass and it's cold, and he's hurt, and the offensive scheme is for him to get the ball out of his hands quickly, and he's under potential duress. Who is he going to be going to out of the backfield? Who are the quick hitters going to? I think Debo obviously makes a lot of sense. 51 and a half receiving yards. Eli Mitchell is basically the only running back that plays now for the Niners. I understand that Debo gets carries as well. Debo is a wide receiver. When there's a running back on the field, it is Elijah Mitchell. Eli Mitchell, over eight and a half receiving yards, and a tip of the cap to our pal Josh Norris, who talked about Kyle Juszczyk on our show on a tremendous Thursday, being involved as the Swiss Army Knife in these big games, the highest paid fullback in the league. So Jimmy's cold. So what does he do? Gets the ball out of his hands quickly and gets his hands back in the warmer. Debo over 51 and a half receiving yards. Eli Mitchell over eight and a half receiving yards. Kyle Juszczyk over nine and a half receiving yards paired with Niners plus seven and a half and the Alan Lazard over, which has nothing to do with Jimmy Garoppolo being cold. All of this, Ken, will pay you 18 to one. I love that. That's really good. Why can't all those things happen? Of course they can. I mean, they're going to. How could it, how could it lose? Yeah. So that's the same game parlay for the uh, for the Packers and the Niners. My same game parlay, I actually have like a 
a big number, but I don't have a lot of legs for the Bucks and the Rams. And I think I have the greatest same game parlay ever constructed for the Chiefs Bills game. Our Chiefs Bills two parlays combined pay like a quadrillion dollars, basically. It's like hey, I made one that's outrageous, and then you like tripled the outrageousness of it, basically, with yours. It's actually really funny. Mine is five hundred to one. My same game parlay for the Bills and the Chiefs. So on the 500 other hundred to one. Literally, like I saw it and I had to do like a double take. I was like, is yeah. that 50 or is that 500? No. Um, power Hour proper coming up next. So you will get our bets for the NBA tonight. A lot of games. You'll get our bets for college hoops. and Maybe not a lot of games. We should have a lot of NHL games for a Friday night. So Bill will be busy. Um, but we're going to start the Power Hour by wrapping up our NFL bets for the Bucks and Rams, the Chiefs and Bills. And then we'll tell you how to bet giving props as well. The free-to-play contest courtesy of BetQL. All coming up. Final hour. Phenomenal football Friday. It's Nick Costos and Ken Barkley on You Better You Bet from BetQL. Please bring it up, Jake. Final hour. Power hour. You better, you bet. BetQL Network, phenomenal football Friday. Nick Costos, Ken Barkley here with you. Got a lot to do here over the course of the next hour. We'll talk about given props, give you our picks for given props. Uh, NBA, college hoops, National Hockey League, overnights. But for now, we get back to the National Football League and wrapping up our plays for Divisional Weekend. So Jake, kindly bring up the YBYB recommends while Ken and I begin our bets and our analysis of Tampa and the Los Angeles Rams. This will be the first game to be played on Sunday as the defending Super Bowl champion, Tom Brady and the Buccaneers, take on Matthew Stafford and the Rams. Tampa is a two and a half point favorite, but Ken, this is really like 2.75. We're pretty close to three here. So Tampa minus 2.75. Um, do me a favor here, uh, Scott. Okay, I see it here up here. Uh, yes, he's just posted this. This is the NBC game on on Sunday. So it'll be Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, and Michelle Tafoya in a righteous or nasty, nasty showdown, right? With Bucks and Rams? If it's Brady, doesn't it have to be righteous? I don't know. I feel like this is a nasty matchup. Okay. I mean, it's, what percentage righteous and what percent nasty? Is it like a 50-50 split? 58% nasty, 42% righteous. Okay. I was going to say righteous is, well, righteous is minus two and a half in this game for sure. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I guess the Rams would be the nasty side in this game. Um, I don't know if like, does Bet Rivers offer penalty overs? Because like we should bet the over because moron Sean Hockey, at least the referee in this game. Like, it's sure gonna, people will find, if you if you say stuff like that, people will find that bet somewhere. They'll find it. I, I'm just saying like, just prepare everyone out there to be infuriated when the demon spawn of Ed Hockey, Lee, his idiot son, Sean gets out there and completely fouls up this game with some ridiculous penalties. Like it is going to happen. So like prepare, you steal yourself against it now for that to happen with the Bucks and the Rams. So again, Bucks basically minus three at this point, 2.75. Tampa minus 148 on the money line. Rams plus 130. Total in the game is 48. What do you got side in total? Uh, I bet Tampa early in the week, uh, which I what I thought was a small number edge. Open two. I bet two and a half with like really reasonable juice on it and held it throughout the week. Watched. I thought the number was going to go up way more than it did. It didn't. Um, it held at three, but really didn't even get to three minus 110. I only got like a tiny, tiny bit of what was going to be closing line value in the game. Uh, the Bucks have given you... I think about what what we expected from an injury report, which was like lack of news on two offensive linemen. It seems more like Jensen's closer to playing than Worf's. Maybe they both play. We have no idea what percent they're going to be in the game. But like, that's kind of what we thought it was going to be at the start of the week. Not a ton has changed in that way. The Rams ruling out Andrew Whitworth, I think, is like probably the most impactful news thing that's happened so far that we actually know for sure in terms of who's playing and not playing in the game, but it's not a ton versus some of the injury stuff that we have in some of the other games. Um, so far, it might turn out to be a lot on Sunday, depending on what the offensive line news is. So just the more I thought about this game. So I think that the number in the game, like conceptually for the entire season, my handicap originally was like, all right, if I ran this the entire year, every single week, I get to like three, a little more than three, a lot. But then I was kind of like, all right, well, like, why is that? Or is there a way that this game might end up playing out differently? And just looking at who Tampa has played 
since they've like sustained some of these injuries. God went after the season. Antonio Brown kicked off the team against the Jets. Uh, some of the defensive injuries, and they've gotten some of those guys back. Like, topless. haven't <laughs> Antonio Brown is topless. Uh, they they haven't really played in a lot of game figure out like what are, like we know i think we have a really good idea of what they would be against a bad team certainly played a number of those games the bills game is kind of like the only frame of reference for what they would be against an elite opponent close like a little bit more than three in that game and their offensive line is more in doubt than it is than it was in that game so like i guess my point is i'm not saying i like love the rams with everything and i want to bet on them i bought out of this basically because i the more i thought about it the more i could get to the current number a little more easily than i originally thought that i was like okay i think i i've slightly over valued the bucks with what they're going to have in this game and like how they've rated down the stretch versus earlier in the season so like okay i'm close enough now i don't feel comfortable kind of like going to war with this bet so um like my kind of heart gut instinct says i think the rams actually might win this game but i don't think that's worth betting on for me it was like i think i had a valuable bet early in the week now i'm not so sure so i did i mean for people listening i did buy out of the bet uh, i don't have a bet on this game I think the market's like perfect, honestly. I really do, honestly. The more I think about it, I think this is an awesome game that I can't wait to watch and have no desire to bet on. Do you think you'll end up with a play on the total, which you would give, of course, on Sunday's edition of Countdown to kick off 10 a.m. to noon? Yeah, and well, 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 the good news is when we do the Sunday show, we'll have more injury clarity about the offensive line. We'll have, I mean, we'll just have Maybe. more information at that point about a lot of, well, it's likely we'll know more than we do now. Maybe it's only a little bit more, <laughs> but we're at least going to know a little bit more uh, than we do now. And it gives me more of a chance to think about that game uh, and the total specifically, and maybe how I want to attack it. But for now, uh, no bet on the game, like teasing the Rams. Is that like a great idea? We took, we included them in the monster teaser for what it's worth. Uh, I don't think that's a bad idea. Like, you know, would I rather make any individual bet on side or total on Sunday? Or if I had a choice between making one bet on either game, or I could two team six point tease the Rams and the bills up, I would probably pick option B and two, two, two team tease the Rams and the bills up. Like that's how efficient I think the two game markets are that like, I would just tease and that's it. Like if you wanted action, for example, on the Sunday games, tease up the dogs would probably be the the right, the thing that I would do to create that action. Yeah. We've been talking about that all week as well. Uh, I'm a man. I'm not quite You're 40, but I'm almost You're there. an American. Yeah. I'm an American. So you know what I do? I stick to my guns. Mm-hmm. I make a commitment, and I see it through. That's what Americans do. This guy, Ken Barkley, that I'm working with. Yeah. I'm glad you said it so I didn't have to, but we're all yeah. thinking. Ken, by, well, when, when the Rams win the game and, I, and I, I've lost right. money, you'll, you'll be the smart one. The coward over here going, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I, have, I have more money than you do now. So I may be a coward, but I also have more money than you. So I, I'd prefer to be in that position as well. Um, I'm going to stick with my bet on the Bucks And just like a number discussion that I think is really interesting. Ken, and look, like I, I totally understand like where you're coming from. I don't disagree. I, I just feel like three is kind of like, even if the Bucks offensive linemen don't play, I feel like three is the right number in the game. Uh, to be fair, so, we're like seven cents away from three. Like we're like really close to three. Like it's just the two and a half is displayed, but the juice on it is extensive. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my Bucks bet. Andrew Whitworth being out, I think is I don't I don't think it's like cataclysmic for the Rams. Like I think like they can still like operate. Obviously, it's bad. It's not, I mean, yeah, it's, if it's not great. It's not, well, like Joe Girardi yeah. would say, like it's not what you want. It's not what you yeah. want to happen. But I don't think it's like the end of the world for them. I think Worf's being out honestly is a bigger deal. And I know that they play different positions. Like Worf's is a right tackle, but Worf's is better. Worf's is awesome. Um, we'll right. see if he plays. Um, who came on and said that they thought that they heard Ryan Jensen was going to play? Was that Evan? Someone came on and said that. Right? Yeah, on the show today, I think Evan came on and said it. Yeah, it was somebody, maybe it was, it was Sam. Maybe today. that like Jensen was going to play, but like we weren't sure about Worf's. Or maybe Evan said because yeah. Jensen has to be. We less I don't think we want to report anything. Donald. Let's put it that way. Oh, yeah. this is not a report. This is just like what right. people are hearing. Um, so I'm going to stick with my bet on the Bucks. Um, I intuitively like the under. I haven't bet it. We'll talk about it on Sunday if indeed I add that to the card. But I'm going to roll with Tampa Bay here in less than a field goal. I bet it. I bet the open Tampa minus two and a half, and I am going to stick with that. Ken, what about your same game parlay here, please, for the Bucks and Rams? It's more fun. It was more fun to play around, around around with the Rams props and correlate them to the Rams winning than it was with the Bucks props. So this is not a commentary on who I really, really think is going to win. Uh, although I do lean Rams winning, kind of just like my gut feel on the game. Rams money line. Beckham over passing yard or uh, receiving yards. Beckham over passing yards would also be kind of funny if they wanted to post that. Rams money line. Beckham over receiving yards. Beckham anytime touchdown. Cup anytime touchdown, but not yards. I'm not going to get burned on that again. Stafford over passing yards. 
and Brady to throw one or more interceptions. So basically all things that go with a Rams win, their star players show out, they both score, their star receivers. Beckham goes over, which he's only been doing like at a ridiculous clip so far. Brady gives you one, probably gives Rams an extra possession, which they probably need to win, honestly. Um, and they win. Uh, and that plays 22 to one, basically. So things that are all highly correlated with the Rams winning the game. Okay. Um, because uh, like there are some props that are still not posted yet as it concerns this game particularly, especially because of um, the Buccaneers running back uncertainty. Right. Like, we don't know if Leonard Fournette's going to be clear. Just to be clear, I don't think that matters at all as far as, like, my bet is concerned. Like, if Fournette plays or doesn't play, it doesn't matter. Like, I still like Tampa in the game. That bet is still in for me. Gio Bernard is fine. Keyshawn Vaughn is fine. But it moves the needle, obviously, in terms of prop anyway. So no no bucks are going to be posted. I don't know if we've got – like, we didn't a couple hours ago on Bet Rivers have Cam Akers numbers. Maybe we do now. We will – we will address this on Sunday morning. Uh, the Prop King will give out plays, of course, so don't worry about that. We will get to the bets for the Rams and the Buccaneers, some of the stuff that's not posted. So for right now, I only have three legs, but it pays 45 to one. Oh, boy. Will leg there be a safety? One. Yes. <laughs> leg number one. We're, uh, we're simpatico on this one. Odell Beckham Jr. over receiving yards. We, we play it every week like it's insane. I'll, I still play it here. I absolutely love it. Over 46 and a half. Bucks money line. Bucks money line. Tampa just to win the game. And now I want you to picture in your mind's eye. Can't you just envision the following scenario unfolding? Let's say it's Bucks are up. Uh, 10 late in the game. Bucks are even up like three late in the game. Rams get the ball deep in their own territory. Here's Stafford driving. You know what he's going to do? Make a mistake. Bucks, any other player to score the last touchdown of the game. <laughs> Call that the exclamation point. That's that parlay. Ex- love it. The exclamation point parlay. 45 to 1. Beckham over receiving yards. Bucks money line. And Bucks any other touchdown scorer. Defensive touchdown, basically, for the final touchdown of the game. You better, you bet, Becky, all network. Nick Costos, Ken Barkley, Phenomenal Football Friday. All our plays for Divisional Weekend. Ken, we move to the main event, the crown jewel, the piece that is a stance, which is the Chiefs and the Bills from Arrowhead. We, at Bed Rivers, we've got two minus 110. Casey, a two-point favorite, total 54. What do you got here, side and total? Uh, all year, for the most part, uh, since very, very early on in the season. I've had the Bills rated slightly better than the Chiefs basically the entire year uh, when they played uh, earlier in the year. Uh, October 10th was the date of their meeting on Sunday Night Football this year. I had the Bills rated a very, very, very small amount better or maybe even equal, I think, in that game. So never been a lot of difference between the teams. Played in the AFC Championship last year when Mahomes was kind of hurt. That number closed three, I think. They play Sunday night, October 10th this year. Chiefs are two and a half with a total of 57. Like, is there any doubt that we have a pretty good idea what the true difference between these teams should be, at least in terms of a betting market? Now, you can like a team to win and bet them. That's totally fine. The game's awesome. Like, I want to have a bet on it. I just, is there a valuable bet to be made with all of the information we have about these two teams? I'm not clear about that. Um, I All week, I felt like this market was pretty good. The decision point was going to be, if it goes to three, do you bet Buffalo or not? That was going to be the decision point. My number in the game is something like Bills by one or Bills by one and a half, uh, and we're at two. So very close. Hasn't moved a whole lot the entire week, so, you know, except to go one and a half to two, which is irrelevant. Um, I don't, I just don't think there's a valuable bet necessarily in the game, honestly. So I think like the market's being created using the same stuff that I'm using to create my number. We're all coming to the same conclusion. Uh, like gun to my head or like lean. Who do I think wins the game? Uh, I'll go with Kansas City, like winning the game, honestly, but just not really based on like any kind of sound handicapping angle. But if I had to pick the game, I picked uh, Kansas City to win. I, I agree. I feel like it's flipping a coin though. I think I would probably take the Chiefs also. And like, like it sucks. Like I get it. It's the biggest game. I understand it's gonna get a 98 television rating. Like I totally Dude, I understand. Have to do Everybody this on wants radio, to bet. Like in all these yeah. huge markets this week where right. I'm like, yeah, like what do you like in the game? I'm like, nothing. Right. And they like tee it up like it's the greatest thing ever, which it is. It's just like there, there are more valuable betting opportunities gained, but from lower mid-major college basketball tonight than there are in the Chiefs Bills game. I mean, that's just the way yep. it is. That just, I mean, it's a super efficient betting market with teams that have played so far this year with same coaches, same quarterbacks, almost no different injuries. Like Tre'Davious White's the only injury that's been brought up the entire week. That's kind of matters. It was Rob Pozzola that brought it up, and his point, just to like give you some extra analysis, the people listening was basically like. 
since he's gotten injured, the Bills basically haven't played like a top level quarterback. And if you go across their whole season, actually, they haven't played a lot of top level quarterbacks either. So this could represent including the Patriots kind of like three a, times. Yes, Patriots three times. But like go through. I mean, seriously, you the person listening, go through the Bills schedule. Be like, when would you identify a top ten quarterback as someone that they played against, and what happened in those games? And it's like really, it's Tampa who put a big number up on them. Like that's it. That's basically all that happened the last ten weeks of the year. So there's at least a chance that Mahomes could score a ton of points in this game. The market expects them to score a ton of points. Mahomes is favored. Like, what What am I supposed to do with this information? So just an interesting angle there. Just Tredavious White, the impact of that in the game, I guess, is something. Well, I, well, I was trying to think, like, okay, like, I think I can make a case for the Chiefs and that the Tredavious White's out. Chiefs are going to score a ton of points, which I think is going to happen. Or on the flip side, no way Kansas City stopping Buffalo unless the Bills turn it over a bunch, which, of course, is within the realm of possibility. Ergo, I want to bet the over in the game. So I bet the over. I'm on over 54. Sure. feel pretty good about it. Um, if I had to pick a winner of the game, I would pick Kansas City. But like I, maybe I'll end up with a small bet on Kansas. Actually, but I want to root for Buffalo. So like I'm actually not. Yeah. Gonna do so that. just root for Buffalo. Yeah. I just want to root for Buffalo. Um, I guess can I give you the same game, Barley, real quick? Yeah, go ahead, and then I'll do it with mine on the okay. other side. Over in the game. Okay. Kelsey to sc- Kelsey to score a touchdown. Josh Allen to score a touchdown rushing. Stephon Diggs to score a touchdown. Jarek McKinnon to score a touchdown. <laughs> Diggs over receiving yards. Kelsey over receiving yards. This is awesome. Mahomes alt over pass yards, 329 and a half. Okay. 80 to one. Love it. Love it. <laughs> I, I I actually think this game might be completely insane. And I know I said that last week about Cowboys Niners and I was totally wrong. But now I feel that way about this one. Yeah, well, this is, I think, you know, probably more of a chance that it happens in this particular one. So next segment, my same game parlay, Bills Chiefs giving props, Bills NHL, college hoops, and we'll start in the NBA. It's going to be a loaded segment. Join us coming up on the other side on the Beck UL Network. It's Nick Costos and Ken Barkley on You Better You Bet from Beck UL. All right, uh, power hour proper starting momentarily, but for now, uh, last thing is same game parlay here. So we can, st- I can do this drive. We don't have to have the music underneath it. So the odds have moved, unfortunately, on my same game parlay. So now it is 375 to one and not 500 to one. Are you ready for this? Again, 375 to one on the same game parlay. 375. Chiefs. 375 to one. Which means if you bet a dollar on her to wins, you win 375. Ready? Let's do it. What you got? Over in the game. Three different anytime touchdown scorers. Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, and Isaiah McKenzie, who I talked about earlier, right? Playing over Cole Beasley now. So over 54, the three anytime touchdown scorers, McKenzie, Allen, and Mahomes. Gabe Davis, now, like, I I gave this out on radio all day today. It's gone up. I'm not saying it's because of me, but, like, it's gone up eight yards. I still like it. Um, I bet over 29 and a half earlier today. It's 37 and a half. Gabe Davis, over 37 and a half receiving yards. Stephon Diggs, over 70 and a half receiving yards. Byron Pringle, over 33 and a half receiving yards. And Josh Allen, over passing yards, 279 and a half, 375 to one. It's, like, incredible. The Mahomes anytime touchdown, a nice little wrinkle in that. But yes, so, what, so Mahomes, <laughs> McKenzie, Allen, and then a bunch of overs, like literally. What, what do you make of the Allen rush yards? Because they just keep like it just keeps going up every week, right? Um, like yeah, like I mean, it, he could what go over like fifty eight, fifty nine, uh, or something. I think right it's now? less than. I don't think it's that high. I mean, unless like it spiked up in oh, the last okay. little bit here, I can tell you because I literally have this page open right now. I have to scroll to the top. Um, yeah. which is crazy. It's almost like Debo Samuel where. It's like, okay, well, now that the games really matter, you just, like, unleash the person that you would never do this with in a regular season game. They didn't do it last year in the playoff game, but it's 48 and a half. Okay. Sounds like what you would you do? Over. Uh, no, I, I mean, just, I would never. I, I, I never I watched bet. the games. <laughs> yeah. Like, I just, you know. I would never bet the under. He's an unstoppable wrecking ball of a quarterback, apparently, when he, he runs the ball. Maybe his coaches, too, his offensive coordinator is too worried about what head coaching job he's going to get. Maybe with my team. Mm-hmm. We'll see. You got a new GM. Yeah, I got asked about it on the fan today. What do you think of Joe Shane? Like, I wouldn't know him if he sat down next to me. Right. You would be like, are you Joe Shane? Well, here, well, here's what Joe I know. Shane. Here's and I'll just, quick, like, yeah, just gotta think people, whatever, like my giant. So it'll be very quick. Um, I don't know if he's going to be good. I don't know if he's going to pick the right head coach. I don't know if he's going to draft the right players, but the team's doing something different and that was needed. So they get the benefit of the doubt from me. And with that, we can start the power hour. Jake the Snake kindly dropped the dope ass beat. Thank you. 
new to Curiosity Stream. Animals with bulletproof skin, impenetrable scales, and poison tip spines? They may look strange, but they've got a serious defensive edge. It's nature's oddballs. Plus, archaeologists in Egypt have hit the mother load, an ancient burial complex with dozens of sarcophagi. Who were they? Explore this newfound necropolis on tombs of Egypt. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com.